The scripture is Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Amen. After the praise of the Golden Choir and the n i s Orchestra, Sr. Pastor will be preaching the message. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the eighth session of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to talk about gentleness. In a dictionary, gentleness is a quality or state of being gentle, soft, tender, or mild. But spiritual gentleness is not simply mildness and soft tenderness. Those who are timid or shyly non-social in character, or those who cannot express themselves very well may appear to be gentle. Those who are naive, or those who don't get angry at all due to low intelligence level, may appear to be gentle in the eyes of the worldly people. But spiritual gentleness is something different. It is to have wisdom and the ability to discern between the right and wrong. but at the same time, to understand and accept everybody because there is no evil in them. It is different from the gentleness of the world. In spiritual gentleness, there is wisdom, and there is uh, discernment, there is no foolishness, and there is no malice. So there is an understanding of everyone. Some people say, I understand, but uh, it doesn't fit my thoughts. But let it slide. That is not the gentleness. Understanding others entirely in their side. This is gentleness. Understanding others in their side. Some of you may not understand what I'm saying though. I've explained it before. You should understand others in their side, not in your side. Well, If you let it slide just to be peace, just make the peace, this is not the way it works. To make it work, be the heart of the other person, and then you can truly embrace everyone just as you love yourself. In other words, spiritual gentleness is to have generosity and virtue coupled with a mild and soft character, with a mild and soft character. If you have this virtuous generosity, you won't just be mild all the time, but you also have the dignity when necessary. I'll explain about this virtuous generosity later in the sermon. The heart of a gentle person is as soft as cotton. If you throw a stone at cotton or poke it with a needle, the cotton will just cover and embrace them. Likewise, no matter how other people treat them, those who are spiritually gentle will not have hard feelings in their hearts toward them. A man of gentleness might have a hard feeling, but it is just for a flash, just for a flash. He understands everything from the other person's point of view, so conflict doesn't take long and is resolved right away. In other words, They do not get angry or have discomfort. And they do, not, they do not give discomfort to others either. They do not pass... They do not give discomfort to others either. They do not pass judgment or condemnation, but understand and accept them. If you judge and condemn others, then you cannot understand them. You cannot embrace them. People will feel comfort from these people, so many people can come and find rest in the gentle. It's just like a big tree with many branches, so the birds can come, nest, and rest on the branches. 
Moses is one of the persons who was acknowledged by God for his gentleness. Numbers 12 and 3 says, Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. The number of the sons of Israel was more than 600,000 adult men. The number, num numbered men alone were 600,000, so including women and children and elderly people. It would have been much more than 2 million. Leading such a number of people in itself would be a very difficult task for an ordinary people. Especially those people who had hardened hearts as former slaves of Egypt. If you are regularly beaten, hear a fall and abusive language, and do the laborious work of slaves, your heart would become rough and hardened. In this condition, it is not easy to engrave any grace in their hearts or be able to love God from the heart. That's why the people disobeyed God every time, even though Moses showed them such great power. When faced with just a little bit of difficult situations, they soon began to complain and stand against Moses. Just by seeing the fact that Moses led such people in the wilderness for 40 years, we can understand how spiritually gentle Moses had been. If he was not so gentle, he would have gotten into a stew every day of his life. Imagine how hard his life was. It is never an easy thing to run a company that has just a couple of hundred employees. What about cell leaders? Sub-district leaders, district leaders? Well, small group leaders, 15 or 12, 20 members, is too much? A few families are too much for you? Is it hard? Are you upset for them? They're not listening to you? Then what about mission leaders compared to small group leaders? What about United Mission Leaders or General United Mission Leaders? How hard are their duties must be compared to yours? The cell leaders, sub-district leaders, district leaders, parish pastors, grand parish pastors, the general grand parish pastor, the higher their positions are, the bigger their vessels are. That's why they can deal with their missions, and if they're not so, they can't but say, oh, this is too much for me, this is too much for me. You should not say that. Well, people in the world often say, like, I can't do this lousy job any longer, but that's what we should never say before God in the church. You should speak only positive and good words. You should never use such expressions even if worldly people do. No matter how hard it is, it is the work of Father God. All you need is to rejoice and to give thanks. It is to change souls, to revive souls, and to save souls. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. You should deal with it with joy and thanks. Even though you are elected as a leader by the majority of people, it is not easy to lead, them, lead that group. To be able to gather the heart of people and lead them, you must be able to gain the hearts of people with spiritual gentleness. Of course, if a person has social power and wealth and helps many people, it may seem that many people follow him. We can find out whether this person really has virtuous generosity when he loses his social power and wealth. If one loses his power and wealth, most people around him would live. If he really had virtue and generosity, many people will still gather around him even though he loses his fame and wealth. They do not follow him to gain something from his power and wealth, but to gain peace of mind from him.
Some of our small group and cell leaders suffer because they cannot accept those 10 or 20 members in the group in their hearts. They say their missions are hard. What is so hard about it? If they change themselves, there's nothing difficult for them. If they throw away their hard feelings, then there's nothing to get hard. Someone says uh, he wants to hit someone else. If there is not such a hard feeling in him, then he would not have any such desire. It is better with oneself in relationship with others. Evil inside you. That makes you feel afflicted. Throw away the evil and you will be set free from hard feelings. If you like to evangelize your group or cell, you have to cultivate gentleness, a heart that is like a wad of cotton. If you continue to cultivate gentleness, you're not going to just stay there where you are now. Next time, uh, you'll become a leader, then a mission leader, then a united mission leader, and then a general united mission leader, and the and like. You're getting recognized, and you're being uh, raised up. By the way, there is someone like this. Senior Pastor, I want to take over a big mission next year. Please pray for me to be elected as a higher leader. Well, if she is recognized and acknowledged by others, then God will work on him. If not, even my prayer does not, even my prayer does not work. Love, virtue, gentleness, and goodness. If you, have, if you have these in you and they work faithfully, then why are you not recognized and acknowledged? The members can find peace and happiness in you, so you can have revival of your group. Pastors in particular should have gentleness to be able to accept the souls. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5 says, Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Here, to inherit the earth does not mean you will receive a piece of land on this earth. What is the use of having a large-scale land on this earth? You get to live empty-handed when you go to heaven. It means you will receive a large piece of land in heaven to the extent to which you accomplish gentleness. You receive a large-scale land. You will receive a big residence so you can invite all the souls whom you embraced and guided on this earth. On the earth, when you invite people, it would be uncomfortable if your house is small. But if you received just a small-scale land and give a party in heaven, then it is no good. The gentle shall inherit the earth. In heaven. He who embraced many people, who gave grace to many people, and who gave life to many people, and who led many people to a good dwelling place in heaven. How great his yours are. He will receive a large scale land, so he can invite many people and give a party in heaven. God lets him do so. A large scale land, then a large scale residence is given to him as a reward. To say you inherit such a great residence means that you will be in a glorious position in heaven. Even though you have a very big piece of land on earth, you cannot take it to heaven. But if you receive land in heaven by accomplishing gentleness, it will be your eternal inheritance. In that place, you can spend happy moments forever with the Lord and your dear ones. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, now how can you bear the fruit of gentleness? Conclusively speaking, you should cultivate your heart into a good soil. In Matthew chapter 13, our heart is likened with four different kinds of soils. It can be categorized into the roadside, the rocky field, the thorny field, and good soil. 
The roadside is stamped on by people and is hard, hardened, so the seeds cannot be sown. Those who have farmed before can understand it well. If seeds fell on the roadside, uh, then they are stamped on by people and are hardened. They cannot sprout, or birds come and eat them. They are stamped on by people and are hardened, so they cannot sprout. Also, if the seeds are dropped in the rocky fields or thorny fields, you cannot have an abundant harvest. In order to gain a great harvest, you have to break the hardened soil, take away the rocks, and pull the thorns. Once the field is plowed to have good soil this way, you can harvest abandoned crops. Spiritually, a gentle heart is likened to the good soil. If a man has a lot of evil, his heart is hardened like the soil of the roadside, and he cannot accept the truth. Because their hearts are hardened, they do not open their hearts and cannot accept the truth. No matter how frequently you deliver the truth and even if you tell them of reliable words, they do not try to receive because they are, their hearts are too hardened to open their hearts. Even if he hears the truth and receives God's grace, he soon has stopped and pours out the grace. He forsakes the grace to gain worldly things. But even this kind of hurt soil can be changed into good soil if the person diligently works to change it, knock and knock by truth to make it open. Do what you're supposed to do, and don't do what you're not supposed to do. Keep what you're supposed to keep. Throw away what you're supposed to throw away, then you can make a good soil. You're diligently working on it, right? Even the most barren land can be changed into a good soil if the farmer plows it diligently. Just as the characters of the field can be changed, men's hearts can also be changed by the power of God. Even the hearts that are hardened like the hardened fields can be plowed by the help of the Holy Spirit. Even the hearts that have a lot of evil can be changed into a gentle and soft heart once the evil is cast away. Even the hearts that have invite, jealousy, quarreling, and other, and other rough forms of the mind can become mild and gentle. The more you cultivate your heart this way, the more of the fruit of gentleness you will bear. But your heart cannot just be changed automatically just because you have received the Holy Spirit. There must be your own effort too. You have to pray continually and fervently and try to think in truth, speak in truth, and act in truth in all things. You should not give up after several weeks or months, but you have to keep up your effort until the end. Keep that in mind one by one and change yourself and throw away what you are supposed to throw away for a year. One year, maybe. You will find out a considerable change in you. Compared to a year earlier, wow, compared to the past, I'm totally changed. Look at my lips. My words become holy and good. You will see that. Besides words, your thoughts will also be changed. When you show this kind of effort, God will consider it and give you His grace and power, and the Holy Spirit will help you. Brothers and sisters, as you plow your heart filled into a good soil, you will automatically bear other fruits of the Holy Spirit too. But gentleness is more closely related with the plowing of the heart field. You cannot become gentle unless you cast away hot temper, hatred, envy, greed, quarreling, boasting, self-righteousness, etc. With such characters of heart, other people cannot find rest in you. That is why gentleness has a closer link with sanctification itself than other fruits of the Holy Spirit. If you have spiritual gentleness, you will receive an answer to anything you ask. Just like you get good fruits when you saw anything in a good field. You also hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly, so you will prosper in all things. As the fruit of gentleness is born in you, other fruits will also be born in you easily. 
But is there anybody who thinks like the following? I don't get angry. I think I'm gentler than others, but I don't really receive answers to my prayer. I do not really hear the voice of the Holy Spirit very well. Then, you should check whether or not your gentleness is flashly gentleness. Also, you can check the extent to which you bear the fruit of gentleness through other fruits of the Holy Spirit. I said the more sanctified your heart is, the more of other fruits of the Holy Spirit you will bear. In other words, one may appear to be gentle, but if he lacks the fruit of mercy or goodness, we can understand that he does not have a spiritual gentleness. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, gentleness is not just to be mild and soft, but it has to have the virtuous generosity. Along with the meekness in heart, you should also have the virtuous generosity on the outside in order to completely cultivate spiritual gentleness. Can you say you're gentle when you have a bitter tongue? You say you're gentle in your heart. But what if others take your uh, behavior, hair, claws, etc., unpleasant? Is it okay? It is much the same as a person with excellent character who is wearing a suit that matches his character. Even if a first person has good characters, if he goes around naked without clothing, his nakedness will be to his shame. Likewise, gentleness with a virtuous generosity is not complete. Let me give you a couple of examples of having both gentleness and virtuous generosity. First, virtuous generosity appears as dignified and moderate actions. Those who are just mild all the time without proper discernment cannot accept others. They will be looked down upon and, and used by others. I hear some are bullied in the school. Then, we need to teach the students, the children, not to hate the bully, but to know why they are bullied and pre prevent from it. Who would bully own friends or classmates without, without any reason? There must be a cause that you might have done. Never blame others. Everything is because of me, or because of my children, my husband, my wife, or my family. My, your side. Blame your side. If you blame others, you can neither see yourself nor cast away your evil. There must be a reason in you. We need to find out the reason and solve the problem. I see some parents come to me and ask me for prayer. Senior Pastor, there are some bad classmates in my son's class and they bully him. Please pray for them not to bully my son. We have to pray for the, the son. not the others. In history, some kings were gentle in character but did not have virtuous generosity, so the country was not stable. On the other hand, some kings had warm and mild characters along with wisdom accompanied by dignity. Under the rule of such kings, the country was stable and the people had peace. Likewise, those who have both gentleness and virtuous generosity have a proper standard of judgment. They do what is righteous by discerning the right and wrong correctly. Men of gentleness and virtue does not turn aside to the right or to the left. When Jesus purified the temple and rebuked the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and the scribes, He was very strong and stern. He has a gentle heart so as not to break bruised reeds or snuff, snuff out smoldering weeks, but still he rebuked the people harshly when he had to. If you have such dignity and righteousness in heart, people cannot look down on you, even though you never raise your voice or try to become stern. Outward appearance is also related to possessing the manners of the Lord and the perfect deeds of the body. 
Those who are virtuous have dignity, authority, and importance in their words. They don't carelessly speak meaningless words. They put on pro appropriate clothes for each occasion. They have mild facial expressions, but not brusque or cold faces. For example, suppose a person has untidy hair and clothes, and his bearing is undignified. Suppose he also likes telling jokes and talks about meaningless things. It is probably very difficult for such a person to gain trust and respect from others. Other people would not want to be accepted and be embraced by him. Among main members, there are some people who like such things. As you listen to this message, please check yourself. You can make people laugh and pleasant, but you cannot be trusted. People may say, you are so funny, you are pleasant. Any place you come, the atmosphere comes alive. But you cannot gain the trust. You cannot gain respect either. Why? Because your words and actions are facious. You cannot be reliable. Therefore, uh, will people come to you and abide in you? You can be just a funny friend though, but people will not share their hearts and abide in you. If Jesus had been jesting all the time, His disciples would have tried to joke with Him. So if Jesus taught them something difficult, they would have immediately argued or in in insisted on their own opinions. But they could not do that. Even those who came to Him to argue could not really argue with Him because of His dignity. Jesus' words and actions always had weight and dignity, so the people could not just consider Him lightly. Of course, sometimes a superior in hierarchy can make a joke to His subordinate in order to ease the mood. But if, if the subordinate jests jet together, being ill-mannered, this means he does not have proper understanding. But there are occasions like the following too. A superior organization speaks honorary language and acts respectfully even to his subordinates. Pastors who do not show respect to others, please look yourself back. I hear some. Some pastors ought to speak honorifically. and show respect, but they do not. Some doesn't show respect to elderly members. Although those pastors show honor and respect in front of me, but when I'm not with them, they sometimes show disrespect. So when I hear about it once in a while, it's hot. I feel hard. But sometimes if one of his subordinates is showing excessive respect, This superior might speak in ordinary language, not in honorary forms. In order to put his subordinate at ease, in this situation, not being too polite might rather make his subordinate feel at ease, and he can open his heart more easily this way. By the way, it should not go on the extent that a subordinate looks down on his superior. You should be in control in relationship with your subordinate. Romans chapter 15 verse 2 says, Each of us is to please his neighbor for his good, to, to his edification. Likewise, those who are virtuous and generous will do everything with unrighteousness. And they also have the consideration to make people feel comfort, comfortable. Next, virtuous generosity shows as actions of mercy and compassion, having a broad heart. They not only help those who are in financial need, but also those who are spiritually weary and weak by comforting them and showing them grace. But even though they have the gentleness in them, if that gentleness only stays in their heart, it is difficult to give out that fragrance of the Christ. For example, suppose there is a believer who is suffering from persecution for her faith. If the church leaders around her find it, find it out, they feel compassion on her and pray for her. Here, 
some of those leaders feel the compassion only in their hearts. And on the other hand, some other leaders encourage and comfort her and also help her according to her situations. They strengthen her to help her overcome with faith. So just having the consideration in heart and showing the actual deeds will be very different for the person who is going through a problem. When the gentleness shows on the outside as virtuous deeds, it can give grace and life to others. Therefore, when the Bible says the gentle will inherit the earth, it has a close relationship with faithfulness that shows as a result of virtuous generosity. To inherit earth is related to heavenly rewards. Usually, receiving heavenly rewards has a relationship with faithfulness. When you receive a plaque of appreciation, merit of honor, or an award for evangelism from the church, it is a result of your faithfulness. Likewise, the gentle will receive blessings, but it doesn't, does not just come from the gentle heart itself. When that gentle heart is expressed with virtuous and generous deeds, they will bear the fruit of faithfulness. They then receive rewards as a result of it. In other words, when you accept and embrace many souls with generosity, comfort them, and encourage them, and give them life, you will inherit the earth and heaven through such deeds. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, virtuous generosity is like the outfit that makes the gentleness shine, but it is different from legalistic or hypocritical acts. If wholeness is not in your heart, it cannot be said that you have virtuous generosity just because you have outward deeds. If you incline towards showing appropriate acts rather than cultivating your heart, you are likely to realize your shortcomings and mistakenly think that you have accomplished much. But even in this world, people who only have outward appearances without having good personalities will not gain the hearts of others. In faith, too, concentrating on the outward deeds without cultivating the inner beauty is meaningless. For example, some people act uprightly and they pass judgment and look down on others who do not act like them. They They, they may also insist on their own standards when dealing with others, thinking this is the right way, so why don't they just do it this way? They may speak nice words when they give the advi advice. But they pass judgment on others in their heart, and they speak within their self-righteousness and ill feelings. People cannot find rest in these people. They will only be hard and discouraged. So they wouldn't want to stay close to these, these people. Some people also get angry and get irritated within their self-righteousness and evil. But they say they only have righteous indignation and it is for others' sake. But those who have virtuous generosity will not lose the peace of mind in any situation. If you really want to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit completely, you cannot just cover the evil in your heart with your outer appearances. You have to check yourself again and again in everything and choose the way of goodness. You should first change yourself by circumcising your heart, and your deeds should be accompanied along with it. If you're evil on the inside and looking good on outside, then what is the use of it? It's like the worldly people showing off, Hey, look at me, I'm rich. Let me conclude the message today. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when things do not go as they want, some people say, I cannot help it because I am born like this. But those who believe in God must not speak such words. We can change our characters and even inner heart by the works of the Holy Spirit. We can change our ourselves with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why the parable of cultivating the heart is written in the Bible. 
If we cannot change, there's no reason to be written in the Bible like, stay away from every kind of evil. You must be holy because I am holy. You are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. A bruised reed he will not break. Even short-temperedness, boasting, self-centered minds, and strong self-righteousness can be changed in nature resulting in a gentle and virtuous heart if the evil is cast away and the heart is cultivated. Even very introverted and timid characters can become bold and generous to help many others. I hope you will diligently cultivate your heart and bear the beautiful fruit of gentleness. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will become a great vassal like Moses and be recognized and loved by God the Father. Let's pray thinking of the message. それは命与える救いの道